Welcome to another episode of Candy Fresh. I'm Kalik. And I'm Anahita. And the theme for today is Sisters in Science. We have an amazing lineup of women in the STEM industries. Uh, STEM stands for Science, Tech, Engineering, and Math. That's right, Kalik. And we have an amazing roster of ladies here tonight, starting with the lovely Jasmine Darden, Tisha Alston, Sharanthi Gunathilika, and interview and performance by Sherry Nicole, AKA The Means. Ooh, and we can't forget DJ Diggy on the ones and twos, guys. Give it up for him one second. There we go, there we go. And then we also have Shakira on the red, as a red carpet host. That's right, she'll be chatting with guests and audience members throughout the night. So sit back, put your hands together for another episode of Candy, candy Fresh. Fresh. It's that Candy Fresh, got the new now next. If you were dope artists in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy Fresh gon' show up, get your shine on. It's that Candy Fresh, got the new now next. If you were dope artists in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy Fresh gon' show up, get your shine on. What's up, guys? This is Shakira, your red carpet host for SPNN. This is the Swedish show in the Twin Cities, Candy Fresh. And to my left, I have a wonderful individual by the name of Mr. Denarius Lewis. What's up, D? How are you doing tonight? I'm lovely. I am blessed, and I'm happy to be here. All right. That is good to hear. So what brings you here tonight? I'm here to support the broadcast of SPIN and uh, your show and just continue to meet like-minded people in the Twin Cities. Dope. So you, I, I think, I don't know about you guys, but he definitely came to the right place. Um, how are you liking it so far? I'm loving the atmosphere. The people here are great and I'm happy to be here. All right. Sounds like you fit right in. And I know a little earlier we were talking about how you want to get a little bit more involved. How do you plan to do that? Uh, really just getting out, getting out here and really working with the organization, being a part of the membership and using those courses and classes to continue to develop the hats that I'm looking to do with in the world of production. Okay, so you're here right now, obviously, as a guest for, of our studio audience, but we're expecting a little bit more in the future. So would you be down to be like an actual guest on the show one of these days? I would be delighted, delighted to be a guest, okay. something I'm always open to. All right, I definitely think we should make that happen. And as I asked you a little bit earlier, because you have so many hats, so many different talents, so many different things your hands are in, what would you focus on if we were to be able to have you on the show? I would focus on the uh, Speak It Tour. We have me and three like-minded motivational speakers have collaborated our brands. Um, so it's us coming together, telling our stories of uh, who we are. Uh, the speech that I'll be having in that in that speech or that tour is called um, living an authentic life. And so it's uh, my perspective of the lessons I've learned throughout the universe and just becoming a more authentic person throughout your life. So. Um, just continuing to uh, plug that and say, hey, if you're around some people who are motivated, why not do something to actually scale in your lives and being around people who generally want to change others as well. I am so 
so excited to welcome our first guest of this episode. Miss Tisha Alston is in the house. How are you, dear? I am fabulous. Thank you. How are you? I'm just doing so good. I am really feeling this outfit. Are you guys feeling this outfit? I mean, we got beauty and brains in the house. You cannot beat that. <laughs> How's that? So let me just give you some accolades. You were born and raised in North Minneapolis. We love local ladies. North side. North side <laughs> in the house. But let's just go over your, your, your accolades here as far as education. You are from St. Cloud State University. <laughs> Huskies. Our red carpet hostess is from St. Cloud. <laughs> you have a bachelor's of science degree in biomedical science and... You minored in chemistry, so how's that for you? But then, lady, you did not finish there. You went on to get your master's in biological sciences with a minor in public health from the University of Minnesota. Yeah. You are now currently working at 3M as a senior biochemist. Yes. What do you make of all of the things you have done to get to where you are today? Wow, you know... Um I'm really humble. I really think it was, it's been a journey. It's been a blessing. It's been a lot of learning curves and um, I've enjoyed the journey. It's been a lot of fun. And you do, you do some give back. Yeah. Yes. You, you work within our community. I do. I do. You have gotten another accolade on top of that because of what you do. Let's talk about the beginnings, though, how did you even spark an interest into science? Wow, that's a great question. And, you know, um, thinking back on it, when I was a young girl, um, I was always fascinated with the body, right? How blood clots, how scabs were formed. I wanted to put everything underneath the microscope. And when I was young, my dad allowed me to go to enrichment programs at the University of Minnesota, not really knowing where that path would lead. I was just more curious than anything and found out that I was actually good in science. I did very well in my science classes in high school. But along the way, I struggled in college. My first year, I got a 1.75 GPA. Hey, you like, got to start from somewhere. Yeah, so it wasn't all glitz and glamour to, in the beginning. I got a D in math and chemistry, and I had to make a decision if this was something that I was serious about. And my passion overrode uh, that, and um, here I am. You know, um, I ended up graduating, <laughs> raised that GPA up to a 3.2, and um, loved science. Just every class that I took, I, I excelled, and I never got a D or a... <laughs> the after that good for you <laughs> give it up for her on that that's a huge improvement <laughs> to persevere and to just follow that passion and then just say hey I can just do better next time and you did that and you went back to school after that you loved it so much you were going to keep on going yes so let's talk about your current role over at 3m what is it that just brings fire and passion into your heart and every single day I'd love to know a little bit about maybe what you do and why you're even doing it yeah, and so um, my, I've been at 3M for 10 years now, and in my current role, I work with a great team of scientists who are currently making new therapies for cancer. And so um, just the work in itself is near and dear to my heart because I did lose my dad to cancer. And so um, it's definitely um, humble beginnings, and it's, it's been a journey. Now, do you see yourself working at 3M in this field forever or do you have something that's burning inside uh, you from that little girl that you just have to get out into the world you know um i enjoy what i do now and i definitely feel like the path will continue to evolve as i um as I journey on at 3M, there are projects that I like to do on the side that I, that definitely stirs and feeds that desire to do more. And it's definitely volunteering and giving back. And I also see myself um, doing some more um, programs. You talked about brains and beauty at doing a brains and beauty um, lab for some of the younger girls, teach them how to make their own cosmetics and things like that, and teaching them the science behind um, a lot of the things that they do day to day. That's amazing. So talking about the youth girls, I know the girls of today are the queen of tomorrow. Is that right or is that right? Especially in <laughs> STEM. The technology is evolving. Social media is doing its crazy old thing. How can you influence, encourage, and inspire the girls of today to continue showing interest in STEM and pursuing that path? And that's a great question. And I definitely love to share my, my, my journey because, like I said, I did struggle in college right away and let them know that it's not an easy journey, you know, but if you are dedicated, if you pursue and, pers and you're very persistent, that is, it's definitely a, a journey worth going on. Um, and to teach them that, you know, nothing is easy, right? And so the path is very narrow, but you have to be dedicated. You have to be, um, you have to be very committed to what you're going to do. Okay. That's a good insight. I think it's good insight for us adults. 
because we just need to encourage one another and especially gals in this industry. Absolutely. We don't want to we don't want to always wor worry about the stereotypical girl things. I think STEM is so important right. to educating and influencing our youth of today because they're going to be queens of tomorrow. Like I said, let's just take it back a little bit to get to know Tisha on a little bit of a personal level. What do you do outside of work and all the give back that you do? Oh, wow. Outside, you know, I like to do the simple things, right? I, I love to work out. I love spending time with my family. I love just simply going to Caribou and enjoying a book. Um, I love to travel. I've been all over the world, so definitely love to travel. That's definitely something near and dear to my heart also. Okay, well, what, let's, talk, let's talk about that for a second. Where is one of the coolest or most inspiring oh places you've been to? Wow. Well, recently I just took a trip to Dubai and South Africa <gasps> oh, um, in December, goodness. so that was pretty amazing. And um, just words can't put, I can't put words to the experiences that I have experienced during that journey. Good for you. Taking time out, take some, take some self-care time, and then come back and just power through the work that you're doing. What's next on the, do on the, on the docket and the horizon for you? You know, like I said, I'm planning to launch a Brains and Beauty lab for young girls. And so that's foremost. And then eventually I would like to write a STEM book for young girls. Okay. And so really encouraging them at a young age that, you know, sometimes people think STEM is hard and they're, they're very, um, they kind of stand back and they think that, you know, they have this stereotype of what STEM looks like and what science and technology looks like and really debunking that in a book that they can really relate to. I love that. Got to make it fun when it doesn't seem as fun or as if it's intimidating sometimes. So I look forward to that. What can we as a community do to support you and, and your goals and how can we stay connected with you? Absolutely. Definitely be on the lookout for Beauty and Brains Labs. And then you can also follow me on Facebook at Tisha All. So that's T-E-S-H-A-A-L. Or you can also follow me on Twitter at simply underscore Kim. That's right. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Tisha Olsen for you. <laughs> of standing next to a beautiful human. What's your name? Jasmine. All right, Jasmine, and what brings you here tonight? I'm here to talk about 3D printing. Okay, now I've heard a lot about you. There's been a buzz. So tell me more about uh, 3D printing and how you're involved with it. Absolutely. Um, I graduated from Dunwoody in May in engineering design with an emphasis, I would say, in 3D printing. And then I kind of took the summer off to try and figure out what I want to do. Um, then they were offering a few more classes at Dunwoody for 3D printing to get a specific 3D printing certificate. And instead of taking those classes, they actually offered me to teach those classes. You printed, you created a Bluetooth speaker, like you printed with a 3D printer a Bluetooth speaker. Can you print me like a boyfriend, a million dollars, <laughs> some new extension? Like what? That is so cool. I've literally never met anybody that can do that. Like I just, I'm mind, I'm, I don't even know what to ask you because <laughs> I, you're a genius. That's that's really cool. Um, but what you kind of you know you explained what you're doing with it day to day. What's your ultimate goal? Wow. Um, ultimate goal, I guess, would change uh, the stereotype about the STEM field. So, like I said, when I was at Augsburg and when I was at Dunwoody, I was one of the only girls in my class and one of the only students of color in my class. And a lot of girls know, don't even know that that's an option for them to go into those fields. Um, I just heard about a study where they said by elementary school, mid-elementary school, girls have already decided if they like math and science or not. And a lot of them, it's not. And they go into other fields. So to try and change that a little bit. That's awesome. And you're doing a great job. Uh, like you said, women of color specifically are underrepresented in most places. Mm -hmm. um, so good for you for branching out and trying to bring more on board. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited for you to, hear, to learn more about you. That's really, really cool. Um, what are you, how'd you get in touch with Bianca and Candy Fresh so you could get on the show? Uh, she reached out to me actually to come onto the show and I didn't know too much about it originally, but she reached out about the night tonight. So I right. looked more into it and said, why not? Right. And I don't know if you guys know, or maybe you do, but here's a reminder that the show, this month's episode is called Sisters in Science and that's exactly what you are. So that's amazing. Um, again, I look forward to learning more because I, again, I don't even know how to use a regular printer. Okay. So we will talk and keep in touch and it was really nice meeting you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Can you, since this isn't going to be out by then, mm -hmm. can you ask her about her book tag? Because that would be really cool. They might actually. I put it in my bio. Oh, you oh did, did you? Yeah. Well, I'm, but I'm you can, Yeah, you can ask about it. Yeah. Talk about it. Uh, so the bow tie I actually made myself. I make all of my own bow ties. So I probably have 20 or 25 of them at home. 
and I 3D printed the stencil to cut out all of the bow ties. Oh my God. Yeah, and for graduation at Dunwoody, I made bow ties for all the guys in my class. So all of my whole oh my class God. graduated together in custom bow ties, all made differently for each one. What of them. doesn't she do? Like serious question. That's amazing. So what do you? What's the like the coolest thing you've ever printed? Oh wow, great question. I would say the Bluetooth speaker. I mean, that's yeah, top of the line right now is this Bluetooth speaker. Here's a reminder that the show this month's episode is called Sisters in Science, and that's exactly what you are. So that's amazing. Um, again, I look forward to learning more because I again I don't even know how to use a regular printer. Okay. So we will talk and keep in touch. And it was really nice meeting you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Welcome back. So today we got with us Sharanti and some of the youth from the Kitty Anderson Youth Science Center. Uh, introduce yourselves. Well, like you said, my name is Sharanti Ganathilika. I'm the community organizer for strategic partnerships at the Kitty Anderson Youth Science Center. I'm Latavia. I'm from the Teen Tech Crew. Oh. My name's Elani. I'm also on the Teen Tech Crew. So. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Thank you guys for coming up. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you kind of got to where you're at as far as education and how you led up to being in the position that you're in. Yeah, so it's an interesting story. Um, when I was 12 years old, my mom took my brother and I to the Kitty Anderson Youth Science Center, and I didn't really know what was going on. I thought it was like a regular day at the Science Museum. So you started where you're teaching? Yes. That's lit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm all ears. I'm all ears. <laughs> so I came in, and it was, um, right now it, it looks like super cool, and it's all like high tech. Um, back in the day, it was definitely looking like someone's basement. Like BC, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, way back, <laughs> way back. But um, basically, it's a youth program, mm -hmm. and I was 12 years old at the time. My brother's 14, and we were just told that we were going to be playing with crickets, and I was like, ew. Crickets? Yeah, so <laughs> crickets are not like the insect, okay. but they're like little computer things that you can like program to do mechanical tasks. Uh -huh. We have a pathway program. So there's middle school, high school, like these young ladies are in high school, yeah. and then internship program. Um, so I started when I was 12, and our whole philosophy is to empower youth to change the world through science. Science, science, science. Science, science. 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 We do science. that every time you say it. Science, science, science. <laughs> Gotta science. echo. You got to, you got to. And so... The whole idea is expanding young folks' idea of what is STEM, actually, through informal STEM education. And so a lot of the times when you come into the Kitty Anderson Youth Science Center, you might see someone in the back in the studio, someone might be doing homework, someone might be taking a nap, someone might be, like, tinkering with whatever. I don't know. I mean, there's always so much going on. Um, and it's all based around how can young folks utilize STEM literacy and STEM technologies to address social justice issues. Oh, so in a way it exposes them to that world, but kind of like a way to dip your toe into it. You know, you're not just science. Yeah. You're like, wait, this is like, science can be cool. You can actually, it's a hangout spot almost. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's I don't know if I would call it a dip. It might be a little like <laughs> it's a, a dive. push. It's okay. a little dive. I mean, <laughs> a lot of our program is a youth program, right? Mm -hmm. And so our middle school students are volunteers of the Science Museum. Our high school students are paid employees of the Science Museum. And our interns are also paid employees. And they getting money? And they getting money. Okay, I'm working on sign up. Uh, I'm, okay, I'm right, just kidding. Right, right. Well, we need volunteers always, okay, so okay. slide through. Right. So, yeah. So, our young folks, high school onward, they get paid. And so, there's so many things going on with this program. There's informal STEM education. There's leadership development. There's community organizing. There's workforce readiness, professional development. And so, all these things are happening simultaneously oh. um, because we really want our young folks to become experts in STEM content and understand how they can not only utilize these concepts and as well as like the technology within the STEM field, mm -hmm. um, but use it in a way that actually impacts the communities that they're from. That's beautiful. So my next question for you, after you had left that program, what made you continue on on that path? Yeah, so when I was a kid, I knew I wanted to be a doctor, mm -hmm. right? And I was a very serious kid. And I was like, look, I have to be a doctor, but I suck at STEM. Mm -hmm. So this is awkward. <laughs> um, but I was really good in this program. And 
what ended up happening is my high school manager, who's now the director of the program, shout out to Joey, hey. um, he had me on a track of environmental health and community organizing. And so that followed me into college where I was a biology student and studied environmental health and psychology. Oh, so, snap. Yeah, it was cool. Um, <laughs> but during my time there, what was really impactful was utilizing all the community knowledge that I had gained throughout the program, as well as like my expanded knowledge of how STEM could actually be used as a social justice tool. And so a lot of that is really what drove my organizing career. I see. So you weren't just like the school only type of student. You no. had a lot of community outreach work as well. Yeah. Which definitely. helped to be way more rounded than everyone else around you. Yeah, definitely. I think there's this like really like weird and like negative stereotypes of like STEM students or like what does a scientist like look like? Right. <laughs> right like the glasses. Little, I don't got my glasses on, but I wear them. <laughs> oh, y'all did it on cue. <laughs> yeah, but there's this idea that like young women, that people of color, folks from low income families don't get STEM or they don't see um, the purpose of it or maybe it's just too difficult. And so this right. program really helped myself um, break down those barriers and make STEM fun and engaging and then also tied into that social justice piece about how is STEM outside of the classroom, outside of um, the laboratories, but then how can that also be a tool for social change as well? Oh man, you're like the, the poster woman for this whole little thing. What is your thought? <laughs> Take a snapshot. No, no, please don't. No. So <laughs> what are your plans going forward? Like, it seems like you got, you like, a total leader when it comes to this. Do you have, like, plans to expand and kind of own your own business with all of this? Well, what? it's funny you ask. So this is actually my side hustle. Word. Just kidding. It's my part-time job. But <laughs> um, I actually work at the Association for Black Economic Power on mm. the north side. Uh, we're opening up a black-led credit union, Village Trust Financial Cooperative. Oh, yeah, and so like, what's really cool is I do membership and communications work there, yeah. but everything that I learned from organizing to base building was all stuff that I learned when I was their age through this STEM program. And so, yeah. Man, see, I'll get an amazing head start. That's amazing. Oh yeah, they're way popping than they want to let on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, how can we keep in contact with you? Well, and the program and how, you know, all that stuff tied up into one another. Yeah, well, the program is way cooler than any stuff that I post on my social media. Gotcha, and so gotcha. if you go on Twitter <laughs> and on Instagram, our handle is at official K-A-Y-S-C. And so there's always going to be some really cool um, photos and documentation around like what are young folks, the projects that mm -hmm. they're actually working on. Gotcha. So that stands for Kitty Anderson Youth Science Center. Yes, in oh, the Science snap, Museum of Minnesota. It. Dope. Well, thank you guys for coming up. Once again, can you guys let people know who you are again? These are going to be the next Women in STEM guys, so give it up for them. I'm Latavia from Team Tech Crew. And I'm Leilani Hester from Team Tech Crew. And what do you guys aspire to be as for careers and things of that nature? <laughs> y'all got to get y'all um, a moment. Y'all up here. Go ahead. So, um... I've always been involved with technology and science and math and like those always been my thing. So being at the science museum kind of like helped me push myself a little bit more towards the where I want to go and stuff like that. So like mm -hmm. um, what I want to do in this next year, because I am a senior, woo -woo. Hey, woo -woo. Um, I want to go to um, St. Cloud and do STEM All programs. St. Clouds, okay. <laughs> you know, I had to cheer for everybody to do St. Cloud, yeah. Um, well, I'm really into photography, so Ooh, that's what I like to do. We got some connects for you. <laughs> uh, my mom taught me a lot about photography because she's also a photographer. Okay. And so, yeah, that's what I'm really looking passing forward to. Passing the torch, passing the torch, okay. <laughs> well, we want to thank you guys for coming up. And you guys are watching another episode of Candy Fresh. All right, what's up, guys? I am Shakira, live at Candy Fresh, the sweetest show in the Twin Cities at SPNN. And I've got a talented individual by the name of Mr. Andre Jones with me. What's going on tonight, Andre? Honestly, it's a dope night. I mean, I feel like I got a really good chance to kind of get to know um, a lot of these women in, in the industry of STEM. I don't really know much about it, but um, it's just kind of cool to see like their journey and like how they're continuing to try to inspire other women. Absolutely. Um, so far, the show's not over yet, but so far, what have you learned? What's the biggest takeaway that you've gotten from tonight? Um, it seems like when you, uh, at least from what I've gathered, is that 
if you start them young or trying to expose them to like different things in science, like they have a better chance of potentially getting an interest in that. And I think it's so. Absolutely, because as women, and especially as black women, we're super underrepresented, especially in, you know, in the science world. So that's, that's a really good point. Um, what brought you here tonight? Well, my friend Shakira, she definitely <laughs> bought me. <laughs> uh, came to support, but then I, I came here and I think I, I got a, a little bit of cool knowledge too. And I don't know, just to be around these people is nice. And that's the dope thing about the show. A lot of people in Minnesota don't think we have this type of thing. Like I didn't, I, six months ago, I was like, what is this? Yeah. So it's a really good opportunity to come out, meet, meet like-minded people, network. Absolutely. You might find somebody, I think we have like an artist here tonight. So you might find people that you have things in common with that you can get to know. Yeah. And speaking of that, of an artist, I hope to see you on the show as a performer soon here. Um, tell them a little bit about what you do. Uh, I mean, um, creatively, I feel like I do a lot of different things. Um, I'm an artist. He does. I do. I do a couple things. A couple things. Um, I'm an artist. I just recently got into recording for the first time. Like, I wrote my first song back in October of last year, which was kind of crazy for me just because I've never done it. Um, and then now I've just been making music, like, every week, just trying to put it on my social media um, just to get people's awareness. And then I also dance. Really big dancer. Watch out. I got a couple videos coming out. Shout out to Taz Bentley. Um, she's on social media. She's really well known. Um, so yeah, that's me. At being again in Minnesota, how many talented individuals Minnesota. live in this state? Like yeah. we are so slept on. But but we sleep we on ourselves. Them. We that's sleep true. on ourselves too. Like there's so many different. I, I don't know a black scientist, let alone a black female scientist. Exactly. Like I just met somebody that knows how to create a 3D printer. I can't even print. So <laughs> like on a regular printer, right? So we have to all kind of do a better job of representing ourselves in a better light. Cause we, we got a little, a couple things going on. I mean a little bit, we got a little, little clout, I feel <laughs> like, but I definitely think it can be prominent um, and just kind of promote it a lot more. And we are back with another amazing powerhouse lady. She goes by the name Jasmine Darden. Jasmine, how are you, dear? I'm fantastic. Thank you for having me here tonight. Oh, my gosh. We are so thrilled to have you. We have props. We have conversation ready to share. But let's just give you a little bit of props because as if you don't already know, you, have, you are paving the way through not only your life, but you are inspiring and encouraging youth of today, which I've mentioned before, are the queens of tomorrow, especially in an industry like science and technology, engineering and math. And it's not always nerdy, so to speak. And I hate that word, but we have to say that just to kind of get that stigma out there. You incorporate fashion, mm -hmm. you incorporate props. I mean, we're gonna show all the things in a moment. But you, let's talk about your background. So you went to Augsburg. Mm -hmm. And in your graduating class, were you not the only one that graduated with math and physics? Mm -hmm. I mean, applause to that. Hello. <laughs> Amazing. And then, and then, hold up, and then after that, no, in the mid, in, is it in the middle or after college, you also started mentoring. Mm -hmm. That was um, while I was in college at Augsburg. I started mentoring, and then after I graduated, I got hired full time. Wow. Mm -hmm. So what even prompted you to mentor? Because you have you were inspired by your mom. She was pretty amazing to influence you to keep pursuing all sorts of realms of interest, mm -hmm. not just the stereotypical girly things. Mm -hmm. But why is it important for you to even influence and educate our youth? When I was in school, both at Augsburg and Dunwoody, I was always the only girl or one of the only girls and one of the only students of color. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to change that. And we have to start with our youth in order to get them to college. No, you know, no senior at that point is just going to decide today that I'm going to go to school for engineering or something in the STEM field. So we got to start looking at them young. Elementary and middle school is where we need to go. Elementary. So when you're talking about little, little babies, mm -hmm. how do you talk about STEM mm -hmm. and your fields to them? How do you even explain what this is? So the program that I worked for with Minneapolis Public Schools is called Guys and Gems. So guys in science and engineering and then girls in engineering, math and science. Um, they start all the way at kindergarten for that camp. And that's when I really started to see that, wow, no age is too young. So whether they're just building blocks to build a tower, I mean, there's math that goes into that. How do you start with a strong base and foundation to build a taller tower? That's STEM right there. It's not all about just doing you know, math on um, sheets of paper or science. 
sure. you know, doing equations all the time. So sure. starting them young. Yep. And just hands-on experience. Absolutely. It's, it's more than just numbers and formulas mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. It's it's actually getting your hands and feet wet. And you're going to show us a couple things in mm -hmm. just a moment. But after Augsburg, you were just driving around one day. Maybe this isn't the exact story. No, it is. <laughs> but you were just driving around one day. You're like, that's done, Woody. What is in that building? I'm mm -hmm. going to go in there. Mm -hmm. And you were just like, mind blown because mm -hmm. you didn't know what was between and behind those walls. Mm -hmm. What did you realize? I asked them immediately, how do I sign up for classes? Really? What yep. sparked your interest? Um, the 3D printing, actually. So I, I had heard about 3D printing. Like, most of us have maybe heard about it okay. and heard that they're, you know, printing stuff in the medical field or whatever, but I didn't think that was something, you know, tangible to us. And when I saw the 3D printers running, I was like, oh, that's exactly what I need to go into. So I went home and I was like, Mom, I'm going back to school. And the first question right away is, financially, how are we going to do that? Like, yeah. I already have you know, two bachelor's degrees, how are you going to go back to school again? That's not cheap. Mm -hmm. If anyone that's looked at school <laughs> or anything similar to mm -hmm. education is just not cheap. Mm -hmm. However, Dunwoody provided some sort of a scholarship program. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. So they have a scholarship program called Women in Technical Careers. And when I um, applied for Dunwoody, it was weeks before classes started. Everything was already full. That scholarship program was, you know, done. They, I was on the waiting list, but I was probably 12, 14, 15 people down the list. So okay. there was no way I was getting that scholarship. So first semester was really, really hard for me to um, pay. And at the end of the semester, when I was still $1,500 short, the school came up with that extra 1500 to get me oh um, able to apply for second semester classes. Then when I came back after Christmas break, some students had you know, either graduated or dropped out. I'm not sure what the situation was, but they had a couple openings for that scholarship program, and I was able to get in. And that funded $5,000 a semester for my rest of my time at Dunwoody. The formula worked itself out. Mm -hmm. Corny joke, but I had to throw that in there. <laughs> no one's laughing. That's OK. But the stars seriously aligned for you. Mm -hmm. So you did the whole Dunwoody thing, and you made some things. I did. What did you make? Let's show. Okay, so this is a couple of the things that she's made. Mm -hmm. 3D printer and 3D Bluetooth speaker. Yep. I didn't even think that was a thing. I couldn't even rationalize what that was. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that. Yeah, so I graduated Dunwoody in May, and instead of going straight out into industry like most of my classmates did, I went home and went to the drawing board. So I built my own 3D printer, and now I'm coming up with projects to start going out into the community um, and start teaching kids how to build. So yeah, this is one of my um, th Bluetooth speakers. I called it the Jazz Music Box after my name, Jasmine. Haha, ha, I love it. Um, and if I open it up here, you can see um, all the wires and electronic compo components that are in the inside. So the students will get to solder all of that in the inside. So they learn a little bit of electronics, and then they'll get to design what they want on the top of their Bluetooth speaker. So, so they can put their name or whatever they would like. Yeah. Do you create the entire thing from inside out, start to finish? Or do you work with others that are like your cross-promotional, mm -hmm. cross-functional partners? Mm -hmm. I started with a pen and paper. Legit, like yeah, all the wiring all and this. everything. Uh, the wiring and stuff, I worked with other people okay. on. Yeah, but as far as the 3D printing, that's um, my side of things, was creating this whole um, housing here. So I started with just a cube, and I was like, oh, we can make it so much better than just a cube. So I made this fun little shape and threw the two speakers in the front, and yeah, came up with this one day. And you got the Batman going. Yep. Is, so this is another face for it, basically. It is, yep. And uh, the electronic components haven't came in yet, but when they do, that'll be my second Bluetooth speaker. And I have a couple more printing at home, so ready to go. That's amazing. And right now, actually, just outside, we'll probably show some footage of it. We have mm -hmm. something being printed currently at this moment. Yep, What's I have one of these Minnesota... Um, stand, standing things like that, printing. So for anyone that's wondering, how do you even, how do you even create this for it to be printed? What's the process? Um, so you design using a CAD software. And to, I mean, it's as easy as drawing out a square in the CAD software and extruding it out into three dimensions. So now you have a cube. And if you want to throw a hole through it, you know, you just draw a circle on one of the faces and cut the hole through the entire um, cube. Now you have a cube with a hole. So you just continue doing that with a lot of different shapes and you end up with something a, more elaborate like this. A cube with a hole. Is anyone else just like completely floored? This is so cool. Hands, yeah. hands down. This is amazing, lady. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. you also have a really snazzy tie. So talk about the tie and how all of this comes together with that. Yeah. So I started wearing bow ties and they're kind of expensive to buy. So instead of buying them, I started making my own bow ties. So I go to the store, buy the fabric, 
and I was tracing paper, and if anyone's tried to trace paper, it gets all over the place. It's pretty hard to do. So instead, I 3D printed a bow tie stencil that helps me make all of my bow ties. Yeah. Wow. And actually, at Dunwoody, um, I made bow ties for all the guys graduating with me in my class. See, see, that's why you have a girl in your class, because mm -hmm. she's beauty brains and she can make things for you, so you're going to be friends with her and yeah. all that good stuff, right? Well, <laughs> even worse, I gave them homework to go home and learn how to tie the bow ties, because wow. they're all self-tie, and none of them did it. So at graduation, <laughs> it's me with a line of guys, and I have to sit and tie every single one of their bow ties. You're in demand, lady. You're in demand. There's, right. there's, there's, there's something for you. Mm -hmm. So what do you make of all this, and where you want to take it? I, I read somewhere you're interested in making roller coasters or you have some interest in the whole thrill mm -hmm. aspect. Yeah, that's been my dream since I was young was to build roller coasters. So when I would go to Valley Fair, you would see me looking at how roller coasters go and stuff like that rather than, you know, just messing around with your friends in line. So that was what originally what I wanted to go into. When I was in my senior year and we learned a little bit about roller coasters in my physics class, I was like, that's what I want to do. So that dream, that little kid dream is still in there. But right now, I think going out into the community and getting more girls excited about STEM, that's, that's where my heart is. That's amazing. So what's the most immediate next thing for you, whether it's your job, whether you're working with the community and youth? What do you have coming up, mm -hmm. and how can we support you? Sure. So I got hired to teach at Dunwoody. I don't know if we mentioned that yet, but I'm, I'm teaching at Ooh, Dunwoody uh, application of 3D printing in one and two. So it's a part of a one-year certificate course that students can get. Absolutely great program. Six classes takes one year, and then you can go out into the field where there's so much demand. It's so new that there's 3D printers sitting at companies now, and no one knows how to use them. So I think there's a huge demand for it. So for me right now, it's getting through my first semester of teaching and then rolling out this Bluetooth speaker. So this is the first one, the prototype. Um, it's ready to go, and now we're just waiting to order all the stuff in so we can start going out into schools and the community and stuff. So we could like buy it for me potentially? Yeah, so <laughs> rather than buying it, I'll teach you how to make it. Okay, so I we thought, like that. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Hands on. So how can we follow you to stay up to date with all the cool things you're doing? So you can follow me on Facebook, uh, Jasmine Shanae Darden, uh, J-A-Z-M-I-N-E. And I guess follow what I'm doing there. I'm not on Instagram or Twitter, but yeah, so follow me there. And um, a lot of, I posted this on Facebook, and a lot of adults reach out to me immediately, as you can imagine. They're That's all like, right. how do I get my hands on one of those? And like the question you said, can I buy it? Well, yes, but I want to teach you how to make it. I like it. So I thought about, um, you know, they have the wine and painting classes. Yep, I so do. So doing something like that, but in, you know, breweries or you know something hey. like that yeah brew and build or whatever you want whatever I'm going to call it but go in and teach adults how to make them because I think it's valuable for us to all learn how are how do bluetooth speakers work that's right yeah drinks and science who's up for that yeah. I am give it up for Jasmine Darden everybody thank you all right stay tuned for more candy fresh right now we're going to throw it to our hostess with the mostest on the red carpet Shakira Edwards stay tuned Thank you. Fresh got that new now next. If you were dope on the in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy fresh gon' show up, get your shine on. What's up, guys? This is your red carpet host, Shakira, reporting at SPNN. And I've got two beautiful young guests with me today. What are your ladies' names? Um, my name's Leilani. I'm Latavia. All right, and what brings you guys here tonight? Um, we just had a little bit of talking about what the KYC Kitty Anderson New Science Center does and how Sharanthi has gone about or gone around her days in the KYC with the youth. Um, also, we were here to talk about our crew, the Teen Tech crew. Okay, so what is the Teen Tech crew? That's I like the name, so I'm excited to hear about it. Well, basically, one of the things we do is a Create Tech workshop at St. Paul Public Libraries. Um, we're hosted at Rondo, Rice Street, Sunray, Arlington, and Highland Park. So check us out. Check yeah, us out. so if you guys weren't aware, this is Black Girl Magic at its finest. That is really cool. So how long have you guys been doing this? I've been doing this for about four years now. Uh, two and a half years. And as you guys can see, the Fountain of Youth, they're very young. So the fact that they've been doing this for a long time is amazing. What got you guys started in math and science and everything? Because for me, those are the subjects I strayed away from. So what brought you guys to those? Well, for me, I've always been, like, very hardcore on science and math. It just came to me. I was always good at it in science and math and just, like, connected to me. So 
Um, there was a program called Design Team for where our, where we all start, most of us start, and we just it's like a pathway. So when I started in that pathway, I was like, oh, this is cool, this is me, and they were like, oh, you can get a job, and I was like, a job. <laughs> So I was like, all right, we're going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I just became, went to my first interview in um, October and, in 2014. And I've been doing this ever since. That's awesome. And how about you, young lady? Well, me, I was at a Right Track um, event, job fair. And I really wasn't like looking at the science museum table. Right. My mom was like, hey, why don't you like check out the science museum table? I was like, I don't really like science. She was like, why don't you try it anyway? You never know. I was like, so I just sat down my little resume, talked to them. And then from there, I got my interview and then I went through the um, process and I got the job. So amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm not in school anymore, but y'all can still tutor me because I don't even know like your basic, my roommate, she's graduating soon. She's got to take some up some college course science classes. We need to exchange information because you guys sound like you know what you're doing. So, I mean, are you guys still in high school? Yes. Okay, so what do you plan on doing in college and past college in your career with science? Um, technically, I don't know. Like, a lot of people don't really ever know. But, like, I know that I want to do something in STEM because I love the fact that I get to teach other youth and other people of color, other girls, more things about science because I know when I started in science I didn't I didn't like I didn't know what science was right. like I can't say I exactly knew what science was and I still can't say that I know exactly what science is but when I get to that point of saying I can teach somebody how to do this and like not just it's not just technology and not just wearing a coat on a, a lab coat or whatever right. so it that's what inspires me of this day of wanting to do STEM but I like also do modeling and listening to music and music is like one of my passions so I don't know where I'm gonna go it's like music was there for a long time and it's just Hard to Absolutely do. nothing wrong with that, and it's so important to have multiple things that you love to do, so you can explore all of those. That's awesome. And how about you? Um, well, I don't really like science, you know. <laughs> but you're good at it. I mean, I'm all right, but um, I'm looking forward to like photography because I really like photography. Uh, my mom got me to uh, doing photography. Um, shout out to my mom. Right, your mom is like your superwoman. Yeah, that's awesome. But I also like to sing. So I'm in one of those two areas. Did you want to hit a note on the red carpet? Or, it, I mean, I mean, <laughs> might as well hit, you know. I was like, nah. Wait, we can see can I get together. a refill? I can give you guys a beat. We can make it, right, we can make it happen. And we're back, and I have a special guest with us right now, The Means. I am special. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm The Means. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, of course. Thank you. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, so she is an artist, and what exactly do you do? I'm a vocalist and a songwriter. Um, I, I call myself an entertainer in general. Um, gotcha. I host events and do birthday parties. I'm like a real-life Clown. Ooh. <laughs> okay, I'll, you know, pencil me in for June. You know. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. So, what type of artistry do you do? Other like when you rap, you vocal. So you kind of do some of everything, huh? Yeah, I do. I do a little bit of everything. I I write original music. Um, people hire me to write songs. Um, I've my 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 most successful song or um, my most professional song. I guess I, I sold a disco song in Italy a couple years ago, oh. which was strange. Um, <laughs> like how they find me, right? Yeah, through the internet, the power of the internet. Um, yeah, so um, I just started out writing songs over beats and um, singing back up for people, and it turned out I was pretty good at it. Um, so now people call me to do it. Yeah. Okay, that's lit. So you ghostwriting, and so how did that inspire you from ghostwriting to make you believe in your own artistry, so you can get on stage and be the main person? Well, it's not it's not ghostwriting. Um, mm. They but people like producers. I don't I don't make any music, mm. um, so producers or um, musicians, different things will send me or DJs will send me music and say, "Hey, Sherry, write a song." Or my name uh. is Sherry, by the way. Um, you know, and asked me to write a song like the guy from Italy just sent me this track, and he's like, you know, and he said I need someone who understands black music. And I was like, I think I can, <laughs> I can me? help you with that. Okay. 
So, yeah. So, yeah, people just send me stuff. And it's always me, though, you know. Right. And so I think I've just kind of created a brand for myself that people believe in. It's kind of unique and different. And, um, yeah. So, what's gotcha. That? So, where'd you get your start? I know for me, I was more like, I have a musical family as well, so I love music. And, like, so we had my brother, like, he's like the, the, the Michael Jackson of the group. I'm more like the Tito, you know, I could do a few moves, you know. But, you know, I ain't all that. So, where were you at? Like, how'd you get your start in music? Uh, I, I set out to be a writer. I, well, well, I am a writer, but I said I wanted to write books, and I moved to Philadelphia a couple years ago. Um, and for lack of, I didn't know anyone, and for lack of better things to do, I started going. I went started going to open mic to meet people because I knew I could hold a note, right. but I, I wasn't trying to be a singer. And someone asked me. I went to the first open mic, I went to the second open mic, and someone asked me to sing backup for him at a festival. And that's the first time I sang into a microphone. So that was in 2013. Ah. So here we are, 2018. And then I sang backup for that band for a while, and then I sang backup for another band, and I started to realize that they weren't paying me as much as they were paying the guys on stage. Mm. And I was like, huh, well, Tell if it. I'm the talent, yeah. then I should be getting the talent's no, no, share, right. right? Equal opportunity so, out here, right? Yeah. And so um, that's kind of, to. I think you said something about my name. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how I, when I decided to go into business for myself, basically, I um, was like, well, what, uh, you know, my name is Sherry, but I don't want to, you know, I want to have some distinction there. So that's why I came up with the means. The means. Because... It's literally the means. That's the reason why I did this, because I wasn't getting the means. So <laughs> now I'm going to have to be the means so I can get the means. So, and it's stuck, and it's stuck. So here we are. But uh, yeah, I came out of the South Philly open mic scene. So, and here we are. Right. So how did you transition from South Philly to make your way up here to Minnesota? I got married. Ooh. See, love, y'all. <laughs> love. I make got you married. Far and wide. You, you will travel far and wide for love. Yeah, I got married. So it's a good thing. But Minneapolis has really, I've only been here since June, and Minneapolis has really um, opened uh, opened itself up to me. So it's been kind of just hit the ground running. And um, I have already released an EP. I've already recorded a couple songs with a couple um, local artists. Oh, so dope. And um, yeah. So things Staying are going good. Staying connected, okay. Mm -hmm. So with your EP, what is it called, and what is your musical process of creating music? Mm, my EP I put out in uh, December is called Dverb. Um, I worked with a local producer named Jacob Gossel, um, who I just met through Craigslist, um, who Power. turned out to be he turned out to be really good at what he does, and so we worked together and. Um, my musical process really is I just listen to music that people either give me or, you know, people show me their portfolio. And when something speaks to me, um, I just run with it. Oh, and, man. you know, you go into your, I'm like one of those crazy artists, you know, you don't want to just lock man. myself in the room for a week. And then I come out and usually it's something that people are interested in. So. Oh, man. And I was, as I was listening to you, I keep hearing the Internet and like how because of the Internet, they need to hashtag that because that's really getting a lot of people exposure to networks that they wouldn't necessarily run into. Yeah. So yeah. how has that helped your career overall? Um, it, I learned early on, I, I, um, I was, my parents were in the Navy. Okay. Uh, so w you can grow up and be a little disconnected moving around a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I learned at an early age that there was, I needed, that something was gonna have to give if I was gonna be connected to anything. Um, so I just, the internet worked for me. I think I just burped into the microphone. Sorry. <laughs> um, it was good, huh? Yeah. Whatever it was. Yeah. So, so the internet is just you know you can it, you can it can be very direct. Um, uh, c being being coming more successful, the the exposure is something that you do have to um, adjust to. Something I've had to adjust to, um, and being discerning about the connections that you do make. Right. But um, with that, you know, with experience, you you can get to your goals fat more quickly uh yeah yeah because it's like how do you separate you know your your supporters and then your friends and then because how do you yeah. weed that all out yeah. successfully without offending people in the process yeah. one of the best pieces of, of advice someone gave me years ago um was that it was time for me to start having fans that were not my friends Mm. Um, and I didn't know exactly what that meant at the time, but as the years have gone on, I, I kind of see, you know, you just, like, I give everything through my music, right. and so I've learned that I don't have to give everything in every other way, too, you know, so, 
You know, I'm taking that. notes. I'm just taking <laughs> notes right now. Okay. Yeah, you know, I really, put, I really put a lot of myself into the the lyrics that I write, and I make sure to write things that are um, true to my experience, and hopefully things that can affect people um, in a real way. And it can be, um, it can, it, it can cause people to feel really connected to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you do have to learn. There's a learning curve. I think someone mentioned before, uh, you know, laying down boundaries. Gotcha. Um, so yeah. Oh man. Okay. It's a process. I'm, I'm noting that one. I'm noting that one for sure. <laughs> it's a and process. So, and so just, I want to get a feel of, especially I know people got questions out there, but one thing I always like to ask, like how do you, in a way, how, what would you tell your younger self or younger individuals who are trying to chase that same dream and aspire to be artists? What is some advice you'd give to them? Mm, I would say, you know, anything can be art. Art is in, art is in the, the way you go about doing things. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would say if you, uh, follow, I don't want to say follow your passion so much as follow your, um, effort, wherever you see yourself putting effort into, that's probably what you need to be do focusing on. And art is just how you go about it. You know, you gotta, sometimes you gotta finesse stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, somebody asked me in a job interview a couple years ago, if I was an artistic person, uh, because he was afraid I was going to be like flighty in the mind, you know, uh, and I. Yeah. Um, quickly let them know that it's not that I'm just, you know, airy like that, like an artist, but I'm a creative thinker and, you know, figuring it out how to get, the shortest way to get from point A to point B is a straight line, but sometimes you got to take the scenic route. Okay, get outside you know? that box. That's art. Sometimes, <laughs> art is the process. Take the scenic route and uh, follow your effort. Oh, man. Well, thank you yeah. for sharing that with us. No problem. Once Thanks again, this me. is The Means. What is a way that we can get in contact with you and follow what you got going on? I'm on all the uh, social medias. All the things. At the means to, like the means to an end. T-H-E-M-E-A-N-S-T-O. Um, and all the major music platforms, Spotify, iTunes. Check it out. Wherever. Um, look up D-Verb. I got Gifts too coming out this summer. Go I'm actually going to be dropping two songs this weekend. Uh, off of the fire mixtape. Off of the fire mixtape. <laughs> All right, yeah, sweet. Yeah, you're going to cook some hotcakes on that one. <laughs> All right, well, you guys give it up for the means. Thank you, I appreciate you. And also stay tuned because we got a performance coming up. This is called Forgive and Regret. Cross my rebel heart and hope to die. How can one be in it but not love at all? Not I. If you need to find me, you know where I'll be. Learning to forgive and regret again. Forgive and regret. Forgive and regret. Again. Chart the course for the stars on my world. The price is much too high to pay for such a rebel girl. If you need to find me, you know where I'll be. Or give I me grand. Cross my rebel heart and hope to die. How can one be in it but not of it or not I? If you need to find me, you know where I'll be. Learning to forgive and regret again. Forgive and regret. Forgive and regret again. Mark my rebel words, I won't be wrong. What will bring us to this rebel road? Should not for hope. Forgive and regret 
Take my rebel body, I'm no voice. Everyone is going to the party, I'm no choice. If you need to find me, you know where I'll be. Tell my rebel heart at once again. So this part, I usually ask for some crowd participation. Can you guys say this? Say this. Forgive and regret again. Forgive and regret again. Keep saying that. Forgive and regret again. Come on. Forgive and regret. Don't stop, okay? Forgive and regret. Forgive and regret. Keep going. If you need to find me, you know where I'll be. If you need to find me, Forgive and regret. Killed it. Thanks, guys. Up in the weeds. I appreciate you. It's that candy fresh got the new now next. If you were those artists in the city, come on and get your shine on. Get your shine on. Candy fresh gon' show love. Get your shine on. It's that candy fresh got the new now next. If you were those artists in the city, come on and get your shine on. Get your shine on. Candy fresh gon' show love. Get your shine on. sweet episode of Candy Fresh. Thank you so much to our amazing guests, the ladies in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Today we had Jasmine, we had Tisha. We had Sarathi and the youth from the Kitty Anderson Science Center. And we also had the amazing performance from The Means. And we can't forget ones and twos led by DJ Diggy and of course, last but not least, all the people who graced my red carpet today. Shout out to all of you. Oh, yeah. So we're going to give it up for another episode of Candy, Candy Fresh.